Welcome back to Grim 3D. It's kind of been a while since I've posted, but I got a pretty good project going I thought you'd want to know about. Stay tuned. So I'd like to thank all the subscribers. Not a huge channel, but getting bigger, and even though I haven't posted for a while, people have stuck around. Haven't been nixing me, so that's pretty good. I plan on posting a lot more now that we've got more things back in order. This whole craziness of the social distancing has kind of been a thing for me. Uh, it's really taken a lot of my time, so I'm trying to get back to my YouTube channel and keep pumping out some pretty good content. So today, I have a project I've been working on that uh, is kind of interesting because I really don't understand it a whole lot, but I've got a buddy. Uh, he shoots archery and he's been having some trouble lately and he's been thinking that maybe there's something wrong with his arrows So he's asked me to actually print some tools to help him with his arrows Okay for setting them up putting them together building them, make sure everything's square and straight So I looked online and I found this one right here. This is a thingy verse arrow squaring tool and I'll show you how it works in just a second if you don't know uh, and, and I don't shoot archery, so I'm not real expert, but uh, being kind of mechanically minded, uh, it kind of makes sense to me why this would make a difference and, and how it can screw you up. So I printed this out for him, this arrow squaring tool. Let me show you how it works. So now remember, I don't shoot archery because my shoulders really can't handle it, but uh, I want to help my buddy out. I looked on Thingiverse and I found this arrow squaring tool. One of the things that my buddy has commented might be wrong with his arrows or might be screwing up his shots uh, is the fact that maybe his knock on his arrow, which is this part right here. So remember, I'm not an expert. So if I screw up any of these words or pronunciations or any of that kind of stuff, uh, don't crucify me. That's not my thing. Just trying to help out. So the knock that goes on the end of the arrow here um, you kind of have to glue it in the end of the arrow and there's probably a, a piece of the knock that goes inside the arrow shaft I'm sure but the problem is is it's when you cut one of these arrow shafts Which you have to do because they don't come pre-made for exactly the length you need a lot of times the tips of The arrow shaft will be not square and that's because it's really hard or impossible to cut these totally square uh, with just a cutting tool So that's where this comes in So I printed this one and the way this actually works is That in this slot right here on the end You put in a piece of sandpaper Okay, now this is a really big piece of sandpaper, which is what I got at my desk I use it with my 3d printing stuff all the time. So it's just what I got around But anyways, you put the arrow in there and then it holds it in there so that as you twist it against the sandpaper on the end right there, it grinds the tip of the arrow, or the very end of the shaft, perfectly straight because it's just rotating in the same uh, cradles. Now, uh, this design that I got online, the attributions in the comments below, was obviously made for an arrow with a bigger shaft. What I noticed when I was trying this out the first time is that the shaft, if you can see that right there, let me zoom in a little bit, the shaft as you rotate it is allowed to move around side to side like that. See that right there? Because it's got a rounded groove here that because it's rounded and I've got a different diameter shaft in the groove that actually sets it up with kind of a flat spot on the bottom here that the arrow is allowed to wander around. And look at how much that wanders side to side back and forth. So that really wasn't gonna work. So I thought, well, I'll just take this pretty good design which actually, I mean, even if this arrow um, had the fletchings on it, you could still rotate it in there because the fletchings would go underneath here. So it's really actually a pretty good concept, I think, but I had to redesign this a little bit. So this is version two right here. And really the only thing that I did was I went ahead and instead of a rounded groove, I made it a slot. Okay, two beveled edges. These are pretty much 45 degree angle coming up at a 45 degree angle, which makes the internals pretty much a 90 degree angle, which seems to work a little bit better. We put the sandpaper in there, still the same kind of concept. 
but as you hold the arrow in there and you twist it see now i don't get any there's no flex there's absolutely no no wandering of that arrow shaft as i turn it against that sandpaper okay now you'll notice i am kind of putting a little bit of pressure on it i don't want to mess with his arrow too much i think this one's brand new and hasn't been cut or anything yet so it's still got to be worked on but you'll notice that it actually has taken some of the end right off that arrow already and even at that if i now and i'm probably gonna get carbon fiber slivers trying this but i'm gonna do it for you guys if i now feel that it already feels more square more straight more smooth more even whatever you want to call it i still can feel like a bump in there so i'm not going to mess with it anymore because his arrow but that was one of the problems that he was thought he had with his arrows and this was the solution hopefully to fix it is this arrow squaring tool which uh, it sounds good to me it makes sense that if the ends either the either the tip or the knock end of the arrow is crooked as that arrow gets flung out of the bow uh, it's going to screw things up if it's crooked at all even if it's straight but has a crookedy kind of pressure on the shaft like these bend like crazy i don't know if you've ever watched an arrow being fired in slow-mo you should look that up but an arrow's flex like crazy so if this isn't square i'm sure it causes problems or you know even the tip if you have like a decent weight target point on there or broadhead on there it not being perfectly square i mean even though the insert probably uh, goes in quite a bit into the shaft it's still going to be kind of screwy if it doesn't meet a square face at least that's the way i see it and that's hopefully this will tell us the story so arrow squaring tool version 2.0 should be able to take any size shaft in there because of the bevels should be able to handle like if you were trying to reseat the knock and you had to cut this off it should be able to handle it without taking the fletchings off so that's pretty cool it's a pretty good deal i think that'll work that's one of the things <clears throat> that i 3d printed for my buddy hopefully he likes it he's coming to get it uh probably the day after tomorrow anyways that doesn't mean anything the second thing that i did for him he was really wanted a stand because one of the other things that happens with arrows and, and archery and shooting is that the weight of the whole arrow from point to knock uh, the weight is a big deal so he really wanted something that he could just set the arrow in on a scale and it seems it seems pretty simple but it just would be something that could just only make your life easier so if you if you had a scale and I'll try my little scaler i don't know if you can see the numbers or anything and this is the probably the wrong kind of scale i think they measure uh arrows and stuff in grains and this will do uh grams and it will do ounces because just kitchen scale that I use for weighing filament. But anyways, if I go ahead and put this on grams, and then I put this on there, of course, to tear or zero the weight with that on there. So now I'm reading a zero, if you can't see that. And then I can put this arrow on here uh, with decent balance, and then I can see exactly what the arrow weighs. And I made this this particular size because a lot of your shooting scales that do measure in grains have a, a weighing platform that's about this size. So this will go on most of the grain scales that I have researched as well. So that's thing number two that he asked for that actually I think will work really well. It's weighing, it's really consistent. It's giving me a decent weight. And remember, I mean, this is this is just a shaft. It doesn't have any fletchings on it or any, you know, insert or target tip broadhead garbage. I don't even know. But so that's thing number two, pretty simple. Um, seems to work really well though. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Now, thing number three. Now here's something he didn't ask me for, and I'm and I'm not even knowing if this is going to help him with anything. But he did mention that when you are setting up an arrow, the balance of the arrow is very specific. Now he mentioned that a lot of people will claim that it needs to balance right in the middle, 
but also there are a lot of people who claim that it needs to balance about 12 percent towards the front so this would be the front of the arrow doesn't obviously have anything in it right now but but it needs to not balance in the middle it needs to balance kind of towards the front so I built this as kind of a visual balancing aid. Now, I don't know if this is going to help him or not, because remember, I don't shoot, but I just was thinking with my mechanical brain and thought, if you could see, if I put that in there, it'll tell me. So let's say right now it's totally off balance. So if I put it back this way, no, so now it's off balance that way. So if I can put it in there and maneuver it back and forth until it stays balanced, maybe that will give him some idea of of how to balance the arrows and one of the things that he mentioned which i don't entirely understand uh but so i'll explain it in whatever way i can is that when you're shooting target points which are kind of the little sharpie blunted you know metal weights that you put out at the end when you're shooting the target points it's decidedly different than when you're shooting a broadhead even if the broadhead uh, is the same weight, the broadhead is different dimension. So instead, a little target point is, let's say, I don't know, 100 grains. I don't know how heavy they are. So let's say a little target point is 100 grains, about that long. A broadhead that's the same weight could be like that long. So that changes the dynamic of where your arrow balances. So the idea would be maybe, I mean, I don't know, just shooting in the dark here. Maybe he'll just decide this is worthless and throw it away. I don't know. But to be able to see visually where that arrow balances could probably help with his concerns about shooting arrows. And he's been in archery a long, long time. He knows what he's doing. Uh, but as far as 3D printing goes and Grim 3D here, I mean, it's good to be able to help people out. It's good to come up with ideas. It's awesome to be able to prototype things really quick. And I mean, if this is no good, then it's no good. I mean, I can make a different version. I can change it up uh, or it can just be, you know, recycled. So hopefully that will help him quite a bit. I don't know. So anyways, three items, uh, a weighing pedestal and a V-notched arrow squaring tool. Sounds like it would work awesome. And then the arrow he loaned me to run any of my tests with and to shoot this video with. So there you have it. Probably one of the quicker episodes of Grim 3D. And keep in mind that I'm not, you know, I, I, don't, I don't shoot archery at all. I probably never will. I'm not excited about the really the archery in any way. It's not something I've really ever wanted to do. But I am excited about 3D printing's ability to make a difference here. For people to be able to prototype stuff, for us to try to make tools to help other people. I mean, all of that kind of stuff, the rapid prototyping and stuff of 3D printing is, is completely awesome, I think. So, so that's about it for this episode of Grim 3D. Leave a comment if you'd like. Just keep it civil. Smash that like button, ring that bell. We'll see you out there.